we're going to start with Vinda and the card embroidery. Um, the way that these little going down the rabbit holes will go is just things that Linda's got heaps of experience with card making and things like that, but also just some of the things that she's learned. And if you want to go down that rabbit hole, she's going to give you some hints and tips. Now, the other cool thing that we've done, well, I think it's cool anyway, we've made a pack. So Linda's been kind enough to share the information with us. So we've put that together in a pack. So you'll have some reference tools after the end. And have a question. Down the bottom, there's like a little raised hand. If you raise the hand, either myself or Holly, we can have a look at it and see what the question is. So Linda doesn't have to worry. We'll help with that. Uh, Linda? Over to you. Hey. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Linda Gantz, and I live in Arkansas. I've been embroidering. I just got my machine in January, and I don't know a whole lot. I don't profess to be an expert, but I've been playing as much as possible. Um, I have... I was a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. I don't know if you've ever heard of Stampin' Up!, but I prefer to make my own cards. Um, just to give you an idea, real quick, these are some of the cards that I've made. They just got a new computer, so she's still trying to get used to everything, too. So anyway, these are just a few, and I, I enter them into our local county fair and last year was the first time I did that locally, and I entered 20 cards, and I got 20 blue ribbons. So Really? Yeah. <laughs> so <clears throat> I'm, I'm trying to get some more in this year, and we'll see what happens. Okay. You can purchase cards from various places. Designs by Juju has them. They're card kits. One of the things that they tell you in a lot of the um, YouTube videos and things like that is to put your card base, which is your, your folded piece, your folded piece, put it directly into your hoop. Don't do that. If you try sewing that way and your card slips or if it doesn't sew right, you just ruined that card base. So if you just take a piece of cardstock, any old piece of cardstock that you're going to use, and I'll go over a little bit of, with the cardstock, and put that on top of your stabilizer, if that doesn't sew right, you've only wasted one little piece of cardstock instead of your card base. Um, you can use your own designs. You can uh, use designs that are built into your, your uh, sewing machine. There are usable designs built into the machine, but it's best to practice. So don't think that just because you put it in there the first time it's going to come out right. Dense designs do not work on card on regular cardstock. And here's just an example. It will tear. I don't know if you can see that hole there of where it tore. I, I just used this one as an example. So I did it on a piece of fabric. You can also sew it onto fabric and attach that to your card base. You don't have to sew it onto a piece of cardstock. Cross stitch and outline type designs work great. And so does red work. Um, here's an outline card that I did and then I colored it in and I, I uh, sewed this onto watercolor paper. This is not as, as thick of some of the other ones that I've used, but I, I just colored it in then. So you can add color that way if you um, don't want to change your color of your thread. Here is a cross stitch design that I did out of the machine. And I basically cut the design in half and only used half of it. And this way I could just take this piece and put it onto a piece of uh, designer paper. And then you can put it onto any color of a base you want. You don't have to use white as your base. You can use any color you want. Then I did a red work design. This one is also on watercolor. 
and I, whoops, I didn't glue it very good, did I? I glued it to a, a, uh, a red layer, and then I glued it to my base, my card base. And on the center of the flowers, as you can see, I used various things that uh, I used to embellish. I used, uh, this is a flower and a brad, and you have a, an eyelet here, and just different things that you can use to, to fancy up your card. This one, on this one, I put a piece of ribbon across the top. Okay, this is another, this is, this was a design I got for free from Oh My Crafty, and that one sews real well. This one was done just on a piece of cardstock. If you have a good stabilizer and you hook your cardstock down good with tape or something, uh, it will, it will sew if you don't have a real dense design. Now, this one I happened to sew onto um, a piece of, uh, felt and then i i used an outline stitch around the edges to hook it down and that dresses it up real nice this is a sketch uh design that i got from oh my crafty and i did this one onto watercolor paper and then i just added a couple pieces of bling to dress it up and i cut it out around the edges with um one of my die cuts that i have and then put it onto a piece of blue cardstock so you don't have to put it on white. You can also, if you wanted to, you could just do a card um, with around the edges with your outline or your uh, fancy decorative stitches in them in your machine. You don't have to necessarily go with a whole large design. I, I have my notes on there. <laughs> the best paper that I have found to use for embroidering cards is watercolor paper this is a 140 pound paper it's very thick if you if you use uh, a card stock that's not your card base you can cut it you can cut it into any shape or size that you want it doesn't you're not stuck like if you use your card base that you would get in a kit um, and then you can uh, basically do your own thing with it uh, if if you're using just cardstock rather than the watercolor paper, don't go with anything less than 80 pounds. It will not hold up to the stitching if you use anything less than 80 pounds. Use a good stabilizer in your hoop. Um, you can use a tearaway or a cutaway, whichever works for you. You can uh, temporarily spray adhesive down before you put your cardstock down to hold it, or you can tape it. Set your machine up the same way as if you're doing your embroidering. I have found on my machine, which is a 9850, that the uh, the best needle to, to use in my machine for the things I was making was a 7511. Um, you can put buttons, ribbon, cords, sequins, anything on your card after you finish stitching it out. You can color it in. You can use markers or chalk or crayons. Uh, you could paint it even if you want it to color in any outlines um you can place it in a frame put as many layers behind it as you want to add different colors anything anything your heart desires and that's pretty much <laughs> what i wanted to share with you i know i went over it real quick you might have some questions that was amazing um <laughs> so i and i know that we gave you a certain amount of time and you were fantastic with it. I fail every time when someone gives me a time. <laughs> um, so if you have a question, um, what we'll do, if you can raise your hand, you see the little button down the bottom that says raise your hand? That will help me. So Amy, you've raised your hand. Would you like to ask a question? And Yep, just take yourself on unmute and off you go. Thank you. Yes, I'm curious what you have on the inside. I've done fabric on the inside, but I'd love to see your take on that. Inside my cards? Well, I didn't decorate the inside. I teach classes at the library with cardstock. And I generally do not decorate the inside of my cards so that when I want to use it, I can grab a card that I have already done the front and then I can put on the inside what I need. Okay. Well, the way I've done it before is right on the card. So I was wondering if you did that. I would, then you'd... Okay. Um, what I would do is generally I will 
take a piece of paper, put it in the computer and print something out and glue it in. Glue it in. Okay. That way you can put whatever words you want. Mm -hmm. that, that will work for, and of course I stamp my inside. You can sew on the inside too, if you want to. Okay. Thank you. Um, what needle do you use when you're embroidering on the... Well, a 7511. The smaller okay. the needle, the better, because you got to remember every time that needle pierces that cardstock or that watercolor paper, you're making a hole. And the denser your design is, the more holes you're going to have, and that's going to perforate it and it will tear easier. Linda, Chris asked what kind of glue you use. You mean uh, in the hoop? The kind of glue in the hoop? You're muted. Chris, can you unmute? Hi. There I you was go. wondering like, what kind of glue you're using to glue your cardboard to the cardboard. Like, so that it, because I found in the past, a lot of times if I try to do that, I'll get like rippling in the, in the paper or in the cardboard. Are you using a liquid glue when you do that? Most of the time it's, it's not. It's more like a paste glue, like a glue stick type of thing, the ones I've tried. Okay. And I've always get a little bit of rippling. Okay, one minute. I love the fact we have a card expert. <laughs> I love this community. This is what I use most of the time. This is a tape runner. And all you have to do okay. is touch it to your cardstock and pull it along. And it will put the glue right on your cardstock. That's 99% of the time what I use. Okay, so you're not using any type of like a paste or a glue or anything like that. I, I very rarely stuff. use a liquid glue or or a glue stick because of the fact that it will ripple your paper if you use too much. Um, you could also use a spray glue um, if you don't overdo it. Um, spray glue doesn't, you know, if you hold it away from your card so that you're not right up against it, um, you could get that on it. And that would work pretty good for you. Okay. Great, thank you. You don't need, that's another thing that I am real big on when I teach people to make cards. Don't overuse your glue. It, it's not necessary. You're just wasting money. A lot of times when you're making a card and if you're going to layer it onto something, glue your corners and then put a little tiny bit in the center and attach it. That's all you need. You don't have to cover the whole surface. Diana, you have a question? Just don't forget to unmute. Now you you have to unmute Diana. I, I can't hear you. Gotcha. you okay, so you back. Hi Linda. Um, Hi. Linda, my mind is buzzing and I'm just thinking of this in another way of making like a 3D picture frame. So I could use all everything that you've spoken about and then just frame it to the same effect. Let me show you something I've done. This is what we loved about doing this session because what we're hoping it does is it bounces like this. So like Diana's now gone, oh, I could do this, I could do yeah. this. I can still use well, that. Cool. Like this. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because you can still put all your embellishments on and then just frame it over the top. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you don't need you to do, do anything different. No, you do it the same way you do a card. I mean, this yep. is paper, of course, but you could sew it and put it in there just the same way. Yeah. Amazing, thank you. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions at all for Linda? How many of you have tried the uh, I'm embroidery? Sure, I'm, for no, I'm sure there's other ways to do it, but I have found this works the best for me. Yeah. Who's, yes, people have tried it. If you haven't tried it, we hope you do. Uh, Amy's obviously done it because she had some good questions and. Um, and that was Chris a great had... presentation, Linda. Really well yeah, done. Thank you. Thank you. As Holly said, you can tell you're an educator. It's fabulous. <laughs> no, it is. It's great. And you know what I appreciate? The fact is that you share your knowledge with everyone. And I think, again, that's what we're trying to build in the community, in our little tiny community that's growing. Right. But... I'm used to doing that when I teach my classes at the library. <laughs> I try each each month I, I teach a class and I, I try to teach them a different technique each time. 
look, and I think, you know, and it, it's such a, it's such an interest, and it is an interesting rabbit hole to go down because, I mean, I had no idea, again, you know, like everything when it's something shiny and new for me, um, but what you can do with stuff like and, this. And yeah, then, and don't be afraid to try fancy fold cards. Yeah, yeah. They don't have to be boring. They can be folded there's a lot Chris, of you, Chris, you had a question? I, I do. You know, another thing I'm wondering about is sequins. Have you ever used sequins? Do you stitch those on or would yep. you glue them on? I glue them on, yeah. Oh, you glue them on, okay. Good question. Because I know some people don't like sequins, they, would, they could stitch them on too. So, If you have self-stick, yeah. These, these I glued. Can you see the bling on here? Yeah. Shining these three pieces. Yeah. They're just glued on. But I do have some that are self stick and I would put that on there. Yeah. I think the thing that I've learned with all these cool rabbit holes that we find, nothing's mm -hmm. cheap. <laughs> I wish sewing was cheaper, but you know what? It's so cool. I mean, again, and you go, oh, I'd like to do card embroidery. Then I've got to get card stock and I've got to get this and I've got to. It's okay. It's fun. Linda, I can't thank you. There may still be other questions going through the session. So, but, and I know that we got through without your thunderstorm turning up. So can I say, thank it someone near and dear. Thank you, Linda. If you You're guys welcome. have more questions for Linda, pop them into the comments on the side and I will grab them and put them in a document and we will catch them. Um, Buffy had one. Um, what is the ideal stitch length spacing for the designs? I'm sorry, what? What is the ideal stitch length spacing for the designs? You know, I don't change that. I take whatever is in the machine. If you're using something that's built in or if I buy something, I just, I don't change it at all. So whatever it comes from the design. Yep. Okay. And I've had no trouble with that. You're, you have to be more concerned with the density of the design than the stitch length. Okay. Buffy, does that answer your question? We had somebody who was going to demonstrate um, the edge-to-edge -edge quilting for us, but she couldn't make it. So we're going to move on to the freestanding lace and we'll do the edge to edge next time. Oh, then that's me. That's you. You're yeah. on your center stage. Look out. I won't, I won't be as succinct as Linda. I'm just warning you all now. If you looked at how much I post and how I witter, that's the way I am anyway. Um, so freestanding lace. Uh, I got into this, I don't know a little while ago or well and i have a cute little butterfly um i think the thing that i really liked about freestanding lace and why i enjoyed it as a rabbit hole was that it takes you away from having something stuck on a piece of fabric although you can do that and i'll show you some of the stuff that i've done but also the fact that it just allowed you to do some of this um, amazing. I now have uh, about 40 different butterflies on my wall in my gallery in my home. Wow. Um, so you're able to do a whole bunch of stuff. I guess linking with Linda, you could put this on a card. I, I guess. Would. You know, I like you could attach. So again, you can start to use different techniques, mm -hmm. but I'm going to call them rabbit holes, different rabbit holes, different rabbits um, together to try and do all sorts of different things. The reason why I started doing all this was that, as you know, I'm trying to do this piece of collage fabric art and all these techniques that I'm playing with is to work out how I can incorporate or should I incorporate them anyway. But it is a different um, skill set. This kind of three types of so i'll just call it fsl because it's just easier um but free stainless there's the free stainless like this so this is done on uh woven and i've done you can see i don't know if you can see it's woven it's not plastic uh wash away 
uh, I started using plastic because I thought, why not? You must be able to use it. And I learned really quickly it splits. And the reason for that is a lot similar to Linda's experience with cardstock. If it's a dense, dense design, and these guys are dense because they all loop in together. So when you wash the, the wash away out, it all stays together. So when you think about it, using plastic wash away as your base for this, it just breaks apart. And so then your design shifts. And so that's that's a problem. So, but anyway, so um, a friend of mine actually, I love the fact that she actually mounted that and that sits in my gallery as a piece of art. Um, these are some, I, I went and trashed my wall. I'll have to reset it. But you can see like the different ones that I've done. So this one, Lutec is great. Um, there it is. So this has got organza through it. So you can actually do FSL on wash away with organza and then put the thread. So it's got, so that, see that blue? So you can do that. That's just the yellow version of the blue one. Some of these designs are so lifelike. It is incredible. Um, there are a couple of places. There's uh, embroidery, mm, embroidery designs by Teresa or TM. Um, she's got some amazing butterflies. I found some uh, somewhere else. I've got more than I should have. And then, so then this one, I mean, he's not really purple. I just wanted a purple one for my wall. But again, you can see the level of detail and even see the fineness of these. And again, that's done with the woven. And then I just went really funky and that's complete. Like, again, that's just the one thread, but it's just a variegated one. So butterflies for me, and they're lovely um to watch being stitched out. They could be, mm, they'd be 20,000, 30,000 stitches, maybe more. It just depends. Um, and then the other thing that I've done, and I don't have because I make stuff and I just give it away. And so people wrap through my gift box. And I've, I've done a whole bunch of bookmarks uh, that is like with more this freestanding lace and they're really cool to watch as well and I think they're um design again designs by Juju is a really great site they've got some really good diverse stuff um thank you um, the, um and then this was a um I think it goes over a wine bottle and I guess just an embellishment I don't even drink but it doesn't matter I wanted to make it um because I wanted to test how fine, you know, it could grab some stuff. I've made babies' booties. I've made um, sneakers from freestanding lace, uh, earrings. So if you're into jewelry, freestanding lace is where you want to go. Um, so, and again, all those designs, they are quite light. Again, I had a whole. Hmm, Hang on a sec. Let me go into my Pandora's box over here. Well, Gail's doing that. There's a bookmark that I mean. I know. You can see it. I like that the bookmarks. You can put them in cards and give them away. Oh, it's pretty. Yeah. Um, the, I, I did some more, uh, earrings, but I haven't put them together yet, but again, again, hi Karen, welcome, but you can see the level of detail that you can get. These are a really quick stitch out, but a really nice gift. So then you can just go on Amazon or whatever and then buy the, the earring bits this is when you go down a rabbit hole i go and get everything um 
And the only other thing I would say with the earrings for them is that um, they're very light. So it's really good to put maybe a jewel, you know, like a, so if, again, if you've got, you don't have to put diamonds, but if you've got diamonds, knock yourself out. Um, but, you know, like putting some sort of jewel just to give it a bit of weight because otherwise we noticed um, my nephew's girlfriend wore them and I didn't put anything and they were just blowing in the wind. It was like a, just a bit, she just looked silly. Um, but they were really good. So that's just what they call freestanding lace. So freestanding lace can go into all sorts of things. The other thing then you can do with freestanding lace is put it on clothing. So I started to play. Let me, let me move that. And you would have seen this in the group. And this was my test thing where I played with it. This was just a bit of fabric that I turned into a tablecloth and I did a corner with freestanding lace. Now they call this um, decorative lace, they call this, but it's still under the free. It's almost like, do they call it cutwork? Is that what it's called? Is is it cutwork where? I think, I think when you cut it, it's called cutwork. Right. But this, yeah, this I didn't have to. Oh, so like you mean, so in the holes, then you cut out from the hole. Yes. Oh. Yeah, Jocelyn? Yeah. So when you, like, obviously that was a corner at one stage, a corner of fabric. Yep. How is that, where, where, at what stage did you remove the actual fabric and stitching the lace? Like, or did you right. stitch the lace, then sew it on the edge? Not so um, what you do with these designs, the difference between the decorative lace and freestanding lace, the decorative lace has a, uh, you know, in projects where you're making maybe a bag, like in the hoop project where they do like a line where you would be putting it. Mm -hmm. So you put this, so the corner of this onto your hoop. Mm -hmm. And then it'll show you where the line is and then you like applicate cut yeah. it and then it puts it it does it like that okay um, these are these are they take a lot of time but i don't know i just I think it. they're fab um and so yeah again yes you could use it for napkins but i've seen it done on collars um where they've taken the collar and put it yeah linda no uh, this is a, a hanky yeah, exactly. So something, you know, just fabulous. So again, it's an offshoot of freestanding lace, but they call that decorative lace. Um, and I just thought that those kind of things, it was just fun to do and just takes it. So they had um, also you could do it like, you know, when you've got a V-neck top, but it's a bit too revealing. So you can do that freestanding lace or that decorative lace to make it a bit more modest without it being, you know, like too, too up there. Yeah, Francis. Um, these are some earrings that I did. I don't know. Got to get them where you can see them. Oh, yep. There we go. They're little leaves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, this is very interesting. I don't know if they call this freestanding lace, but this was a design I purchased. Um, Hold on just a second. Something's covering up my screen. Um, and when you when you embroider it, it actually embroiders in a circle. And then you cut it or you dissolve your stabilizer and it becomes a rope, basically. Um, so it's a necklace, a chain for a necklace that I that I made out of silver metallic thread. Oh, what was it like to do that with metallic thread? Was that challenging i think it was my first metallic project which was probably oh, not real smart but, um it wasn't bad um i just went very slow and you know tried to follow the basic rules of i think they suggest you use a cone stand and you know various things when you're doing the metallic um yeah. the other freestanding lace i did that was huge or big i, I can't show you because it's packed away for the year but i made a a star for the top of my Christmas tree oh, and yeah. I had, probably on the page somewhere. I think it had 
it's 18 pieces or something and you embroider each one of them and then you actually use your sewing machine to sew them together so and that's such a good point christmas decorations and freestanding lace are amazing yeah look at linda's pumpkin wow santa yeah so i think was it i think it's valerie thorne in our group did an entire christmas village Wow. She had that machine going all day. Every there was I think there was it's gotta be at least a dozen different houses she did. This is all freestanding lace. It was magnificent. It should be if you go into the group, either I don't know whether anyone notices, but I hashtag everything because that's how we should be able we should be able to find stuff. It doesn't always work. But if you hashtag FSL, it should come up. If not, search. For, I'm sure it's Valerie or oh, Valma. No, Valma. I think it is. Um, her Christmas, her Christmas out. It was just a labour of love. She did take machining for service after it because it was a bit tired, but did it perfectly. So, so you're right. I mean. The whole freestanding lace stuff is a lot of fun. Um, Francis, you I was just else? I was just going to tell people if you want to do one of these bigger projects, it's a really good idea to buy these great big cones of yarn of thread versus the regular size. And that's right. I remember you ran out, didn't you? I yeah, I had to order more when I was making my star, but I forget how many yards this has. This is sim thread. It's uh, I thought it would say on here, but oh, 550 yards in the big comb. So versus, no, no, that can't be right. 5,500, I think. So it's five times, maybe five times as much as this little one. So Jocelyn? Um, just quickly, relation to Linda's handkerchief. I think it was Linda did the hanky. Yep. That would be beautiful with um, for a bride, you know, with her initials in it or something like that um, I have seen that yeah I've seen that yeah and Chris Herman was saying that she's seen the you've seen something with the bride haven't you as a headband for a bride they actually even do and I don't know even know how it works they have like these um, toe sandal things that they make for adults I can't call them thongs because in America that's very different to what we know as thongs in Australia. <laughs> flip flops, don't you, in the US? We call them thongs. <laughs> Would you chill? We call them thongs in Canada too, don't worry. We had this big discussion about bum bags versus fanny bags in Australia. Oh, no. We would never call them fanny bags. It just wouldn't happen. <laughs> anyway, I digress. <laughs> So again, take a look around if you're interested in freestanding lace. There's, you know, there's so much. The other thing, this is actually freestanding lace, a bookmark, but it's done as an applique freestanding lace. It's just another, it's the third offshoot of FSL. Um, and so it should have a tassel, but my husband didn't want a tassel. He just wanted the planets because he thought it was cool. Um, is it OESG? Is that what it's called? OESG is the. Yep. yep. They've got some really good stuff as well. And this is where these came from. They did a session, and I did a wrap up of it in the group about the session and what I learned, which is what I want to share with you now. So, again, lots of fun things. This has been a really cool rabbit hole. And you can, I mean, here's my little, these are my. What do you call them? <laughs> Shoes. That's done all in FSL. I haven't put together, and I think my great nephew will probably already be outgrown them by now because they make these grow like weeds. Clearly, you can tell I've never had kids because I'm fascinated by how much they grow. But anyway, um, so the things that you need if you want to go down the FSL rabbit hole. This is the heavy uh, gauge woven wash away WSS um, I got it on Amazon I've put a link into the pack that we're creating so you know but um, it's the stuff that you really need to use in your hoop and I'll show you how I hoop it 
um, sometimes, and particularly if it's a dense design, I will tend to uh, double the WSS. These are the kind of things, and again, there's no one way to do this. It's a bit like what Linda has said. It's just the way that I found works for me. Um, I find doubling up is better, but you don't have to. You can try single, and I have done it sometimes. If it doesn't seem to be a particularly dense one, I'll go. And you look at it and you go, you use up a lot of, you know, stabiliser and then it costs money and stuff like that. But the results will make, it will make a difference to your results. So I guess it just depends what you're looking for. So here's how I hoop my wash away. So what you'll notice is I've got two things. A, I've got my magnetic clips. But you'll see that I've also got these real, I've got pins that I pop in. Because what you're trying to avoid at any cost is movement of the stabiliser. If you think about how close these dense things are, you don't want it to move. So you can see that I pin them. Um, Francis and I, when we were playing with this, we were looking for T-pins, wasn't it, Francis? Um, and I couldn't get them here. And so I found these really, they're quite thick gauge. There they are. Thick gauge, they, they have love hearts on them. You don't have to have love hearts on them, but mine did. But it's a much thicker pin. Like I wouldn't use that for, a, like, if I was pinning a pattern on a bit of fabric. But they are really, really good. And so I put them as close onto the outside of the hoop. And what I'm trying to do is stop it from pulling when it's stitching. Yes, Linda? I have also found that um, sometimes you're doing a very small design um, or when I did um, my pumpkin, it only calls for one panel in the hoop and you can move it over and put in more than one in the same hooping. You can, but I, my only, the caution will be, is, and again, it's where you probably need double wash away but and again because if it moves you'll wreck it so what i did i'm sorry no, what no. i did was i i put a a cutaway in the hoop first no no not no not on fsl um i put in i can't remember what i used on the bottom right now but then i i put um oh i used three layers of wash away yeah and actually what i did was I used small pieces and I taped them so that I didn't, you know, once I made one, you cut away the excess and instead of throwing it away, I used it on the next one and I taped it down, making sure that it would cover the, the space that was going to be sewn. Yep. yep. Yeah. I mean, I've got buckets of cutoffs of cut away, right. wash away, tear away. Francis put some really good um, links to how to save your stabilizer in the group. They're in the albums. Um, so prize if you can find it. Um, I can tag you, but I'd prefer you find it. No. Um, but I think the rule of thumb, like with your stabilizer, use more, not less. I think for the FSL. So again, so again, you don't have to use the magnets. I'll put that up close so you, can, you don't have to use these. I just love them because it just gives me something else. Um, I use a 7511 needle. Um, it was really interesting because when I watched the OESD uh, event that they had, they spoke about using a ballpoint needle. And I went, oh, okay. I, hadn't, I had not done that and so I tried it. For me, it was a disaster. The thread broke um, and all sorts of things like that. Um, so I went back to my 7511 sharp, like embroidery needle, and it was fine. Uh, so that was, that was really good. So you have to slow your machine down. FSL, because it can get quite thick, it's, this isn't something you want to do at 800 stitches per minute. 
Um, but you know I'm a real tortoise with my embroidery. I don't do anything fast. 500 is the maximum I go anyway. Again, my personal choice. And I do that on either of my embroidery machines, so whether it's the 550 or the 9850. That's just my personal preference. Um, it can go 800, whatever, but I just, when things go wrong, goes wrong really badly at 800 as opposed to 500. I tend to do my FSL at 400, so it's going to take some time. Um, so you just have to be patient with it. Um, so, but it is, I would highly recommend if you haven't done this rabbit hole, it is fun to go down. It really, really is. If you've already got the woven um, WSS, to me, that's the that's the the biggest thing. You've got thread, you've got a needle, you just need a design. So it's um yeah, it's really, really good. So I've had a lot of fun with that. Um and like I say, I now have if I walked you through my house to my gallery, you would see my wall covered in butterflies and you know, they sort of arrive in random places. And it's a lovely gift. It's a really nice gift. There's a, something about um, a friend of mine's father passed away and her gift I gave her was a butterfly. And she, like, apart from the fact she burst into tears, but unbeknownst to me, her father loved butterflies. So it was just one of the, like, it was a really lovely, you know, thing for them. So, you know, it's something different like that. So what questions have you got? Anything? One thing I just like to say, Gail, is last year at Christmas, I made a whole bunch of um, freestanding lace angels, and I mailed them in a card to you know numerous friends that I have. The other thing that I did is I made a whole bunch of um, angels, and I made Christmas lights in different colors, and I made what? snowflakes, and I hung them up at work on on my um, we have like clear glass dividers because of COVID, we all have dividers between our desks yeah. now. So I got suction cups and I hung them up all around my desk and the two guys that I work with, I hung them up all around their desk too. And I had numerous people would come in the office and say, what is that? And yeah. there'd be lots of times I would just take one off and say, well, here, have it, you know. I know. Put it it, on your they're just lovely. And the other thing too, like once they're done to wash them, I don't, I used to soak them. Part of the session that I went when we went when I went to the OESD one is they wash them, then put them, you know, like on a cake cool, like a rack or just a bit of it needs air top and bottom. Because I used to soak them, but the longer you soak them, the softer they get. Sometimes it needs some stiffness, sometimes, but not always. So just wash under a tap first and then let them try and air dry top and bottom if you can. Um, I used to stick them on a towel, but sometimes they stuck. Yeah. I use a piece of parchment paper. Yeah. So, um, and if it's if it's still too stiff, you can always re-wash it. If it's not stiff enough, then you just spray it with you know Terial Magic or you know like a a spray like a starch, and you can get it back again. But yeah, look, I, if you haven't you haven't gone down this rabbit hole, it's um. It's fun and there's lots of stuff and um this will definitely somehow so the collage art piece that i'm practicing on has a butterfly that i'm supposed to do in fabric but i'm not i'm going to use one of these because i want to see how i can get dimension on my piece of art so yeah anyway. that's me gail martha time. gail martha wants to know where you got your magnets in australia <laughs> Um, so you should be able to find them. If you're located in the US, Martha, it's Ken Sewing and there's another one that we always seem to be able to find stuff. Ken Sewing and is there, it's called Sewing Back. Is, is that the, I don't know whether that's a franchise in the US, but Sewing Back seem to have them. You can get them as singles or you can get them in packs of four. Um, and I have... The, when I got the 550 machine, it came with four. With the 9850, I had to buy. I had to buy them. Uh, and I, I got them in a pack of four. I would have probably got mine. If oh, it looks like Linda has some. This Perfect. is a pack from Hobby Lobby. Oh, and do they fit? Do they fit? No, you, you can pack them to anything. Okay. 
So they're not the Naomi ones? No. You can also find magnets at Lowe's, L-O-W-E-S. It's a hardware store. Okay. You know the U.S. conversions. So that's equivalent to our Bunnings here in Australia. This is what the... Okay, here's my question. Can the, I go on? This is what the at Lowe's, ones look like. Do they, do they do sausage sizzles out the front? So our hardware store called Bunnings are renowned. People will go to the hardware store just to get a sausage on a piece of bread with onion. As long as the onions are on the bottom. Yeah, you don't want to slip, hey, Jocelyn? <laughs> so if most don't do that, there's a marketing opportunity for them. We'll just let you know. And we have an election, a federal election coming up. And one of the big things we love about federal elections is when you go to vote, you can buy a sausage oh, a piece, and they call that the democracy sausage. <laughs> Welcome to Australia. This is just the weird things that happen. It's a thing, trust me. And people are devastated if they go to vote and no one's selling a democracy sausage at the polling station. <laughs> Seriously. Seriously. Yeah. I know. Anyway, by the by. Chris, you've got a question. Not not about if it's about a democracy sausage, good. No. <laughs> I was just going to tell you that I saw on one of the websites that I was watching, you were talking about having a whole bunch of um, extra um, water soluble stabilizer. They say if you take it, put it in water and in, into a spray bottle, you can use it actually to stiffen up your freestanding lace if you want to. Yeah, yeah, it becomes oh, yeah. such. Yeah, if you need that. So, and again, this is, I, I don't, can't call them crickets because a cricket to me is a game you play. And it's not spelt like I call it a cry cut because to me phonetically that's what it sounds like. But anyway, but if you want to cut out on one of those if, with the app, with the fabric and you want to stiffen it, it's exactly what I've done, Chris. I've taken some of my WSS, made it in water, and made the starch. Yeah, Linda. At my sewing center, they always give me one of their magnetic calendars, and you can cut those. They're they're paper thin. You can cut those. The kind that you stick on your refrigerator. Yeah. And you can you could cut that and, and attach it to anything too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so the thing, so I mean you can see the little magnet because it just hoops over. The hoops got the magnetic strip on it. Oh you're yeah, you're talking about the hoops for the for the or the magnets for the hoops. I'm talking about for your FSL. Yeah, yeah. But so yeah, it's 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 a great thing to get into. Um it's a lot of fun, a lot of things that you can do. And just something different. Again, because um, I also make handbags, I could put it, hey, I could put a butterfly on my Super Mario overalls, I think. There you go. <laughs> I might do that. My husband was devastated that I didn't embroider them. But now I've thought about it, I could do a 3D effect. Anyway, um, but anyway, that's FSL. Fabulous rabbit hole if you want to go down it. Um, and clearly, I kind of like it. So, anyway, so that's it for everyone. All right. Thank Good you. job. Thank you. Over time. Hi. Uh, in the hoop projects, there are a lot of in the hoop projects. You can do, you can do zip bags in the hoop you know, complete. You can do lined and unlined bags. You can do book covers that are in the hoop. Um, I really like this closure for the book cover on this one. You can do bookmarks, you can do fobs, you can do all kinds of things that are completely in the hoop. I kind of like doing my bags not in the hoop because I like doing a fully lined bag. But sometimes doing them in the hoop is really a lot of fun. And so I was just going to demo for you just the kind of the middle for um, how to applique within the hoop and just how to end it as well as um, a fob. So I have a couple started here. And I'm going to turn on this video instead. Let's see. Okay. Can you guys see that on that video now? 
if you go to the two hallways there the second one hallway second one yeah then you'll see that she's now got her machine on. can everyone see it i think my camera got all askew there we go so when you're starting an in the hoop project what they will do most of the time is your very first step is going to be um, an outline that you do directly on the stabilizer. And so you're going to do it right on the stabilizer. And you're you just going to put gonna that help... to the camera, please. Yeah. Thanks. Can you see it now? Yeah. Yep. So you're going to put it direct. You just stitch the first step right on the stabilizer. And then you're just going to take your fabric, and I usually use vinyl, and cut and just cut it to cover that outline that you did. And then I use lots of blue tape. I use a ton of blue tape when my in the hoop, and then I just tape it all down. And so then I just put it back on, stitch out my design. and oops and i end up with this so at the very end this is going to be a um a fob and so what i need to do now is i have my design all stitched i you know and i have i still have it all taped and on the back side what you do is you take your another piece of vinyl and you cover it up and you're gonna tape it on there. You have to be really careful not to push it through within the hoop projects because you don't want to unhoop this at any time. And then you're just going to tape that on, turn it back over, put it back on your machine and finish your last couple steps. And you're going to have your, I have, how many hoops do you have? I have uh, four hoops. I have uh, two of each of the bigger sizes. I feel there's a. I feel like here's something I made earlier. Yeah. There's a fob I made. Ooh, can we see it? I'm losing track of which. There we go. So there's a Hamilton fob that I made. And then on the back, on the very last step for in the hoop, I always take out my white embroidery thread that I use. I always use 90 weight embroidery thread for most of it. But the very last step, I take it out and I use matching thread to my top stitch. So here's the fob that I made that's Hamilton. And you can see that on the back, I used embroidery thread that matched my top stitching thread. When I first started, I was using the white, the white bobbin thread, and it was just coming out a mess. And I discovered that just doing it like this, you know, just made a much neater um, design. The other thing that I learned from somebody is when you are done with your um, design before you put your backing on to take a lighter and just very gently go across it and just kind of melt the ends of those threads and it'll just lock everything in there and it holds everything in place really really well or so, you burn it completely well you don't <laughs> don't go overboard on it <laughs> I I won't show you the scorch mark I have on one of my hoops. <laughs> do you really? I do. <laughs> yeah, They're on one of them I do. Though. They're good lessons. But I just wanted to show you what not to do. So that's why I did it. So, yeah. So if you just go lightly over it, just kind of quickly going around it and don't get your hoop. And don't catch your stabilizer on fire but it really does a really nice job and that way even if anything's kind of loose it just holds it all in there 
as far as but that's just for fobs as far as bags go i was hoping that this camera would work but so for applique So this one has a whole bunch of applique on it. So the, actually the white, the black, all of it has been applique. So when you stitch it on, I use my duckbill scissors and then I just cut it out along the stitch line and then I move on to my next step. And I was gonna show you how I do that with this bob if you go to the three dots down the bottom i'm just going to see if i can get bob to see that second screen for you um and you there's a option called change layout and if you go to change layout right down the bottom is the maximum tiles to display if you pull that right across hopefully then you might be able to increase the number of tiles you can see. Try it anyway and see. Oh, I lost you guys. We've got you. There we go. I got you back. I can see her now that there's a person that left in the bottom left. Oh, okay. So hers moved into that spot. Okay. We'll thank that person for leaving. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm going to lift that up a little bit then. There we go. Um, I Where did my, oh, it's behind me. So for this one, my green is next. And what it does is for applique, it will give you a, most designs that I have found will stitch out a line that will show you exactly where to put your fabric. This is a pretty quick one, which is why I was just going to show you this one. Like Gail, I usually sew a lot slower than this, but I sped it up just for this. Okay. So now, so everybody can see this one. Can everybody? Oh, I can't get my angle on that one now. There. Is that okay? Yep. Okay. So can you see the line that got stitched there? You'll have to bring it closer to the camera. You see the line that got stitched there? Kind of. It's a green line. You can kind of see it in the white. There's a green line that got stitched. Oh, yeah, now. Can you just run your finger over the line so we can see? Yeah. Sorry. So, right, right here. Uh, inside on the white, yep. And then on the black also. Yep. So that's just my placement line. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that. Some of the designers have really, really great step-by-step -step directions, and this one happens to have fantastic step-by-step -step directions. Some of them don't have such great step-by-step -step directions. So for this, Then I cover up the placement line. I'm gonna use a little more blue tape because you can't use too much blue tape. 
So now I've got it all taped down. I'm gonna put it back in and it's gonna pretty much run right along that placement line again. That Hogwarts? Yes. Slytherin. Are you doing them all? She's probably done them all. My my other one is Ravenclaw. May I ask what company they're from? String Theory Fabric Art. STFA. Yeah, they're good. STFA. She has really fantastic step-by-step -step video directions and PDFs. If you're into, uh, what do you call it? Fandom, isn't it? I All know things fandom, geeky. Yeah. yeah, geeky and fandom. Um, Which is my family. We're going to go and see a monument to a camel. <laughs> What can I say? I love him nonetheless. Well, Sammy Caden, but you know. <laughs> if it's geeky, my family's into it. <laughs> As you can see, but I don't know if you can see my Vader over there. Yeah. <laughs> over on the other side of the room, I have a Yoda. <laughs> Okay, so now that has been stitched down. I'm going to take my duckbill scissors and I am going to trim as close as I can to that stitch line without cutting the stitches. So let me see. I'm going to tip my camera a little bit so you can see that. When I first got these scissors, I watched all these videos on the proper way to, to cut them, to use them. And it seemed like everybody used them in a different way. And I finally decided it must just be the way you want to use them. Has everyone got duck bill scissors? Yeah. Got them for Mother's Day. There you go. That is a great present. Yes, my daughter's pretty good. She got me the the ones that you trim the threads with, the long ones that are bendy. I got those for Christmas. Oh. She just, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Like so these? She, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she goes, well, what sewing thing do you want now? <laughs> <laughs> Rest again. What I've learned is that rest assured, when you're going to go down all these rabbit holes, there's always something that someone can buy you. Yes, yes. <laughs> I, Buffy, it's such a good question. Cause I'm not, I'm not left-handed, but the rest of my entire family are left-handed, and I wondered whether <laughs> getting left-handed scissors in those, if anyone's found a good pair, Buffy's looking for them. I think we looked before for a pair, didn't we? They, um, maybe. I can't remember. Yeah. I think we were looking for. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think but I've seen them. Um, um, maybe Amazon? I often, my sister and, and her children are all left handed, but they tend to cut right handed only because they left handed scissors. So, my niece is a fashion designer, she always cut that right handed because it was impossible to find left handed scissors that would work for her. So, I don't know whether it just left her confused. Or what. So, after I'm done with this, I'm not going to put it back in because I can just show you what happens to it on my other one that I've already done. So I've got this all cut out. So I cut it as close as I could to the stitch line. And then I put it back in for the third step with this applique. And then it 
it will do a satin stitch around the edge of it to cover up the whole entire edge. So the applique is kind of a three-part process when you're doing in the hoop that it gives you a placement line and then you put down your fabric and it cut it does a you know a stabilizing kind of stitch. You cut it out and then you do your satin stitch. And then for the for the zip bags at the very, very end, all you do. This bag is almost complete. I've got a backing on here that's already been stitched on. And I've got everything else all appliqued on. The only thing left to do is to take another piece of vinyl, put it across the front of it, and um, tape that all down, put it back in my machine, and then when I pull it out, I will pull it through the zipper area, and then I will have a zip bag. There are, gosh, what are some of the different in the hoop? Uh, there's so many different in the hoop projects. Um, so there yeah. were bookmarks, book covers, ornaments, fobs and dangles. There are mug oh, rugs, wow. placemats, table runners, zip bags, pouches. Baby lovies. Yes. Yeah, yeah, the lovies. There are all kinds of things that you can do. And I think one of the most important things to remember if you're going to do an in the hoop project is to get a company that has really, really good directions. Because if they don't have really specific directions, it can just be really frustrating because you don't know what step you're on. You don't know where you're putting what. And sometimes they don't tell you how big of a piece to cut out. And you just, you know, and it's just really frustrating. And I've had some of those and I don't like those. So and you learn really quick to open the zipper before you do the last step, because otherwise it's very hard to turn it out. <laughs> Gail would know nothing about that. Gail would know everything about that. <laughs> anyway, but yes. Have all of you done some sort of in the hoop project like Bob or something like that? No? No? Yeah, Amy has. Is there one that you want to do? I bought a million patterns. Yeah, I do a lot of this. <laughs> That's my I, rabbit I, hole. I just keep buying patterns. I do a lot of the Kimber Bell. Oh yeah, I haven't heard of those. What is it, Kimber? Kimber Bell. Kimber -E Bell. Yeah. Yep. Thanks. She's out of Utah. Yep. Yeah. I think it would be fun if we could at some point maybe share those kinds of ideas with everybody, hold up what you have, because I seem to learn better when I'm looking at what you guys are making, like, oh, I could do that, or I could do that. Yeah, inspiring. Mm -hmm. How many yeah. hours have you got, Amy? How I many, I'm sorry? have an entire container of things. <laughs> How many hours? That I've made, like, Something on my mark. I have lots of bookmarks that I've made, and, Doctor Who book covers <laughs> and oh look there are more Harry Potter <laughs> bags. I'm having trouble finding in Australia the that book cover that you've got there, the blue one, finding the book that fits in it. Ah, oh, okay, so you need to go the little the the mini one. Yeah. Uh, go to uh reject shop. Who? Oh reject shop. Oh, you may have mentioned that. Yeah. I don't think you have, um, you don't have shiploads in Queensland, do you? Have what? Shiploads? I did say ship, S-H-I-P. Just want to clarify for everyone with my accent, shiploads. <laughs> it's a Tassie thing down here. They have them as well. Reject will have them. Um, A5 mini, uh, A5, the bigger ones are the A6. 
Um, oh, after this, I'll send you, uh, yeah, but Reject will have them. Okay, but yeah. Notebooks, uh, yeah, they're from Amazon, yes? Amazon. Well, I got mine from Dollar Tree, three right, for a dollar. Which is like our Reject Shop equivalent. The okay. notebook, so um, Diana was asking some of the companies that have got good instructions for a beginner. So I've just shared in the chat. Um, nosy pepper off with their threads if you like fandom and geek stuff definitely go to string theory fabric art um, and off with their threads yep yep so they're really great ones to start with and it really does if it wasn't for Holle when I first started with this because I was really hesitant to do in the hoop and particularly embroidery designs where she I was lucky I went to all these really good places straight up to find designs. I think that if you go to some of these um, other places where the stitch quality is no good and the instructions are poor, it really puts you off. I was yeah. petrified and I'm still scared of doing in the hoop with a zipper. I still go like this when it gets to the zipper. I still do that. Blue um, tape. Blue tape is your best friend. No, this helps. If I do that, <laughs> if I don't do that, it just all goes. Um, but, you know, like just going to different things, we, again, there's an album in the group and I'm banging on on my bloody albums, but um, about uh, embroidery companies that we know through experience have got good design, stitch outs, yep. helpful, supportive. Um, so, you know, if they're, you know, and I'm comfortable, comfortable to share them. Some of them don't always have in the hoop projects. Creative Kiwi has some good stuff and they have quite a bit of free stuff as well. And it's a really good way to try a designer. Just I try think one of the free ones. Watching the string theory fabric art videos though help me with all the others, even the yeah. ones that don't have good directions, because her directions were so clear. She's highly entertaining and they do come with a language warning. But if yeah. you can just Except that <laughs> she's very quirky, but she's very good. But yeah, I, I will put I will put the language warning on there, but that's okay. She warns you. Um, you walk. So vaccine house. card holders. You guys don't do those, right? Oh. Yeah. What are they? Card you know, like holders in the US. Yeah, we don't have vaccine to do that. Vaccine card holder. Then the US, they needed a uh, evidence. Ours is all digital. So many different in the hoop projects that you yeah. can do. And I just think that they're so much fun. I love doing in the hoop. I have so much stabilizer yeah. for it. Yeah. I, I find with um, book covers and bookmarks, use tearaway. Otherwise, you're going to have bits of your stabilizer showing. With the bags, I use um, cutaway. Yeah, the, um, I was going to say something, but it's gone now. All right. I've forgotten. It's all right. I'll remember. Random. I, I have one tear away, and when I, I did a sign, and when I, um, I think you helped me with it, Gail, you rotated it for me. When I tore it away, it's like all hairy around the outside. Is that just a poor, sta a poor stabiliser? Or well, that's it? Just what? So, to Again, like anything, there are different thicknesses of tear away. So it may well have been quite a thick one. It's going to, and and again, um, once it tears away, you might get what I'll call the fuzz around the end. Um, you could use Holle's lighter trick. I don't, but but it, I use a thinner tear away. I don't, so use again, it on the, I don't use it on the edges, though. I just use yeah. it on the backs. One of the yeah. things I do use though is I always use a um my grid ruler and the rotary cutter on the straight edges to cut. Mm. I only use my deck bill scissors around corners and you know curves and things. Where yeah. I use these, these are Tim Holtz's mini serrated scissors. Can I tell you I love them. So Tim Holtz, uh, five inch, 
And so I got these at a shop that specialises in card making. Who'd have thought? And what um, do you use those for? That's how I cut my vinyl. So you use a rotary cutter on the straight edges? No. No. I, 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 so no is the short answer because it's, it's ended in tears. <laughs> um, so what I love about these is the size of the handles. So that's what, you know, and these are like, they are the tiniest. I wish I could show you the serrated edge. They're mini, 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 mini. Yeah, so Linda's got some. Fabulous. They do come in different lengths. But for me, for vinyl, fantastic. I wish I could use the rotary cutter. It's just not in my wheelhouse. I have enough trouble trying to cut fabric with a rotary cutter. Um, I get a bit excited. Um, and uh, is it, I think it's healed. I, it got me the other day. I, my hand got in the way of it. But so yeah, if 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 you can, if you haven't got these, I tend to use those even for applique. So anyway, yeah, they're great. Again, there's no one way to do it. I think that's the bottom yep. line. Don't, Whatever get... works for you. That's kind of like the ductile scissors where I was watching all the videos and people were holding them this way and some people were holding them that way. You know, the ductile on the top or the ductile on the bottom. And I was like, well, which way is the right way? It's whichever way works. I think whichever way works for you. Yeah, I, I don't think it's worth stressing out. Like, if it works, great. I mean, I think they're a great tool to have. But yeah, I mean, watch the videos, but yeah. But then I reckon in the hoop is by far the biggest rabbit hole because you can make so many different things. Oh, yeah. So many different projects out there. I think we can almost do a session on its own just on in the hoop. Well, yeah, mug rugs, coasters. Oh, that's what I was going to say. Sorry, my goldfish brains remembered. I made the colouring doll. So Creations by Connie. Yeah. A really great site. She, if you like Disney, you'll love Connie. Um, but she does a lot of Disney stuff, but she does a lot of other stuff as well, but does anything from a sanitizer holder to a key fob. But she does the colouring dolls. They're really quick stitch outs. And then I took it and I made it into a book. And so I made that as a gift for someone. And then in the hoop, you can do busy books. So, again, great thing for the kids where, you know, like, you know, I can tie a shoelace, I can build something. I can. So in the hoop can do a whole bunch of stuff where you're using the embroidery part of your machine um, and you don't sew it. It's weird. It's very clever. It's, I still find that pretty magical. Ripples. Hey, that's me again. Sorry. Um, the bowls, and you would have seen some of the members have embroidered on them. Um, this is all done on your sewing function. I'm sorry to make the bowls or placemats or whatever. It was all done in your sewing function. Obviously, the embroidery is done in your embroidery function. Um, so. Again, now I've got to, I've got to, this is what we can get in Australia. Our favourite store, Bunnings, go grab a sausage sandwich while you're there. Um, so this is macrame cord and I buy it in really large schools. Um, this is, so again, I don't know if anyone can convert. So this is five millimetre. I don't know, what is that in inches? 10 millimetres, three-eighths, I know that. So, But this thickness is the right thickness. I know I think some people in the US have used, is it window sash cord, but it hasn't been successful. And I think it's because of the composition, like it's more plasticky. Oh, no, clothesline. That's what it was. It was washing, washing line cord, I think. Yes. Nancy, you've got a question? No, I was just going to say it was close. It's clothesline that we use. Right. Yeah, that's right. And it's and so don't use that because of the plastic content. You really need. So I call it macrame. Some people call it macrame. I think right. anyway, macrame in Australia. Um, it's great. These are great, 
and I never thought I'd need 50 meters. Of course I do. I have spools of this. Um, it's a really great cord. It feels cottony. And again, maybe at your hobby lobbies or those kind of stores too, you you might be able to just buy macrame cord. So and I know you probably can, but this this was pretty this was pretty reasonable. Anyway, that's what you need is is the is for your start. So what can you make? I'll just go down here one moment. I'll just go downstairs. Oh, oh, oh. So this is what I started with, which was just a coaster. Uh, really simple. And you just keep going till you make it big enough. And then I made a placemat. So it means I got it a bit bigger. Okay, and I made, I made sets of these. Um, and they just finished off pretty simply. And then I went from a placemat to a low bowl. And then I just nodded at the end. And you can see that it's not a very high bowl. And then I got really big and I made this. So I made a huge basket. This was all done on the 98.50 sewing. So that is actually possible to get that curve and still sew that size. And I put handles in it and then I just nod it off. So I made a whole bunch of these. Again, what a surprise. I made go hard and go home. Um, again, 7511 needle, you will need a lot of thread. It's done with a zigzag. Um, so at first, let me just... If you go to YouTube and do um, rope bowls, there's quite a lot of tutorials there by different people. There are. And in the, the session guide that we'll share with you, I've put a link to Julie Hall, who is the lady that I, she's an Australian embroider, um, and that's who I learned how to do it. And now I'm going to try and find the beginning of this. should have done that before. Um, and it's really, it's it's... Good fun. It's actually really relaxing. Okay. So you'll see um, it comes with a bit of you know tape on the end. And it's really easy to start. And I thought it was easy to share Julie's um, video on how to do it rather than me um, do it myself. But basically you just start to roll like this. And when you start, and it's always the more difficult right at the beginning because it's tiny. And then what you do in sewing function, uh, I get a cone of thread, kind of like you know how Francis did for the FSL. It's a lot easier if you've got a cone of thread because you just go through a lot of thread. I tend to match it with the fabric, uh, the rope. I do some straight lines that way, and then straight lines that way because what I'm trying to do is just secure. That bit. So, because otherwise it tends to pop out and then you feel like a magician with the magic rope trick because it comes out. So once you secure, you secure that, it's just then a matter of switching to a zigzag stitch that is wide enough. So you just have to play with your settings, you know. Um, that's all you'll have to do to allow you to allow you to go and lock in stitches both like one coil of rope to the next i don't i don't know can you see the stitches on that by any chance my i have really matching thread i'll take a close-up i can't really up. see the stitches yeah that's how good my thread matching was um i'll take a close-up photo of it and pop it in the guide so you can see it but once you get the zigzag right it is then just a matter of you slowly, I always have the rope to my right and then you just slowly go round and you just start to, and, you just, and it gets bigger and bigger and then you stop when you want to stop. Um, and it becomes such a rhythm and particularly if you use, um, you don't have to use a foot pedal, you can use um, just the stop start button if you want and you just get into a rhythm and then you just go, oh, and then to bend it, 
you literally start to fold it up and it will bend naturally as you continue to sew. So that's how that happened because I started to slowly bend it and then do that. And then once I had my curve to get that, I just kept it. Now it gets tricky because you can see how big that is and you think about trying it, but you can do it. A flat surface is really important. I used a whole bunch of books because I don't have an extension table. It's one of the few accessories I don't have. I know. And then you just keep going. And then for the handle, when you get here, you just don't join these guys. You just leave a length and then continue and then go around and do the other one and then you start to join. Um, they, again, they're a lot of fun. Um, and I remember, like, I'd have to actually stop because after, like, an hour and a half or something, like, I'd sort of be like, you know, because I've just got, it's just the same. Like, you just... It's very relaxing. So that's a lot of fun. Now, to embroider on them, I've got to say I've not had a lot of success because I was getting the P-foot error. So some of that, as you know, the 9850 doesn't have an adjustable height adjustment. That, so you're, the foot that comes with it, that's what it is. You can't change the tension. If you get the P-foot error, you cannot override it. And so it's hard to go on, but there is a way around it. So some people have been able to embroider on these with no problem, okay? So it's a bit like why does this happen to some people, not others? Because it does. I can't. It's just the vagaries of machines. But what you can do, there is a foot called a uh, free motion foot or a pH foot. Guess what I've got one, guys. <laughs> I know it's a surprise. There's all my feet. Making a rattle. But it will look like that. Okay. Is that and a standard item or new or separate? Of course you have to buy it separate. Oh. <laughs> it's a rabbit hole. <laughs> Um, so there's a darning foot that looks like that, okay? But the reason why I use this one is that I can adjust the spring, okay, which is why these springs are here. It's okay to use for embroidery because the foot is an embroidery foot, but with caution. See the length? If your design is too big for your hoop, It'll hit your hoop, okay? And that does not end well at all. So you just need to be really conscious of the design that you pick is well within that it's not going to hit there, okay? So you can absolutely use this. Um, and what that will do, because it's got the spring, you will overcome the P-foot error, okay? So if you want to embroider on rope, completely doable. Um, you would obviously do it when it's at this stage, like before you start to put these on it. Um, you wouldn't be able to do it on the walls of this. You could do it as a patch You could, and then sew it on by hand, but to embroider straight on it, you wouldn't be able to do that. But if you want to embroider, on the base of these, you absolutely could. Um, you know, again, these are great, interesting, fun things. I've actually made a floor mat for my bathroom, which mat which goes in the same like I thought matches this. Why? Because I could. Uh, absolutely all washable. So I've thrown these in the machine, in the dryer, um, and again. That's why they need to be stitched really well, okay? Uh, you can just, some in when you take them out of the dryer, they might be a bit, you know. I've steam ironed them or just used a steamer to flatten them back out. 
or if I dry them outside in the sun, I put them on top of the line like that so they're flat. But again, as a floor mat, you can just chuck them in the wash. So can you swim um, it if it's got embroidery on it? Yeah, which one? Um, the same with these. Uh, that's gone in the wash. All the placemats have gone in the wash because we're obviously grubby. There's only two of us. It can't be me, but anyway. Um, but no, again, as something else to try and what your machine is capable of. Um, and I've done this. I have a basic Janome $600 machine, more than capable of doing it because it's zigzag and straight. Um, and I really think that if you wanted to play with something like that, it's worthwhile. Again, I don't embroider them, um, but that's just a personal choice thing for me. Um, my ha because I mean, some of you have seen my house because it's quite um, it's designery anyway. It's very plain. There's not bits in it, but that's okay. Except my forty butterflies. Yeah, Jocelyn. Have you seen the ones the tutorials where they actually use bits of scrap fabric to wrap around the bowl? The rope. Oh, yeah, like a like the raggy sort of ones or whatever. Yeah. They so you them. just have the strips of fabric, and as you're sewing it, you just feed it around and around and around yeah. the rope, and you can change your colours. You can have one yep. colour on one side. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, again, it's yeah, and it, I guess you could dye this if you wanted a different colour. If you wanted to go there first, mm -hmm. I've not. I've not yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. I've not ventured down that rabbit hole. Um, because I quite like the neutral of the thing. Yes, Amy. They did actually have a, a YouTube the other day that showed how they could dip it in dye and it mm -hmm. soaks up from the bottom to the top, even after it's finished, like what you had there. It's very pretty. Yeah. I've never That's done it, but it's a good idea. Mm -hmm. I think, look, I don't know. Amy, like, does it make sort of an ombre effect then? Yes, it does. Oh, very cool. Yeah, it's very pretty. You know, Google is sorry, that's me just putting stuff away. Um, Google is just amazing. You've got to know what to type in or what if it comes up. I mean, you don't know what you don't know, sort of thing. But I just think, again, I, I, why would a sewing machine sew rope? I haven't tried it yet, but apparently, you can embroider on cork, as in, you know, cork placemats. I bought some from Ikea. But I haven't ventured down there. I mean, I I embroider on cork for notebooks and handbags, so it stands to reason. The only difference is it's a lot thicker. But that could be really cool. Like people have gone, oh, you guys don't have Kmart in the US now, but we still have Kmart in Australia. But you can get like the vinyl um, placemats and then embroider on those, like just embellish them. Like, very clever. Um, I think that's about it for rope. Any questions? No? I think that's the end of like the things that we wanted to definitely share with you. So in the last 20 minutes of the session, I don't know where the time's gone, but there you go. We had a couple of questions that were asked on the page. Yep. Like, does anybody have ideas for storing, organizing files on their computer and having printed inventory or pictures? I don't have a printed inventory. I do have them organized on my hard drive and a backup on an external hard drive. Yeah, I've got over a hundred. I have them I have them organized by genre. I started yeah, I I got a little bit of A and a little bit of B. I started with, you know, like uh fashion, I don't know, children, whatever. <laughs> but and that was mainly because of what I was I I acquired. Now that I buy them, I remember, like, so I do it by designer. So I have some by Anita Good Designer and then Nosy Pepper and so it goes on. 
Um, I was just gifted this software. It's Floriani, my design album. And if you don't have a thumbnail of your Jeff file, it pull and even if you don't have software, it pulls it up so that you can see it. Is that something that you can purchase? Freebie? Yeah. I used yeah. the two stitch organizer that was the freebie listed in the album. And it sh it pulls up thumbnails of the images too. And it's okay, Duffy? Pardon? It's okay, it works. Yeah, it works for me. I have like I have a folder. My main folder is called embroidery, and then I have subfolders based on what type of project it is for like an in the hoop straight embroidery and then inside there there it's like which uh you know what type of project it is like my daughter was in spongebob so we did a bunch of little spongebob things and stuff like that but then the two stitch um it's let me look and see it's called two stitch organizer and uh it pulls everything up and you can have it scan your whole hard drive. It'll find every embroidery file that's on your computer. Yeah. And then every once in a while, I'll, I'll do a, res a, a research because sometimes when I download, I accidentally leave it in my download folder and not move it into my, my embroidery folder. So it'll find those. Buffy, is that free? Yeah, I found it in the, in the group. In the albums. Yeah. I should look in the albums. Um, well, that's much better than the Floriani because that you have to pay for the Floriani. <laughs> if you've got, a, and I can, I can only talk for artistic digitizer. If you go direct through their um, browse, then the thumbnails will come up automatically. Um, it associates within, and again, I've got to talk Windows, not Mac. Um, it doesn't associate it. I did work out, well, no, I didn't. My husband worked out how I could view my thumbnails straight through Windows Explorer. Um, I did a step-by-step -step and no one else could get it to work except him. So I think that means I'm, I'll just give away my husband and then he'll come and... Um, so, I, and I'm not sure... I have no idea. Like I say, like we tried the step by step and it worked because we then tried it on his computer and like so that was how I tested it. But when I shared it, um, it wasn't in this group, it was in the other group. Uh, and so it it yeah, it just didn't work. So I didn't put it into this into our group simply because I don't want to share something that I'm not confident that others can do. But like I say, my husband's He's fairly low maintenance. He's a great musician, so he can he can play well. Well, um, he works, but yeah. So, so that's it. But you know, that's the thing. I just I've got too many designs. That's my that's my problem. And it's like anything too. I think you know, like I say, I was fortunate enough. Like when when I got the machine, there was a CD that had designs, and then when I you know. I've got this other one, something else came with it, and then there's designs on artistic digitizer. Like there's designs everywhere. And so I don't know what's on there, but as I buy them, I remember. It's a bit like I remember mostly about who's done what on the group because we've been there since day one. So I remember, like, and I know that we've done the album, so I know what's in there. New people aren't going to know that, A, the albums even exist, and, B, what's in there. So, I mean, it's, it's like anything. You get used to it. I think, for me, it's about everybody's different, what works for you. Again, and I've got it mixed up in terms of I now have noticed I tend to use about a dozen designers and that's why I kept them by designers and then within the designers I did the like I need a good I did subcategories folders so if it was FSL if it was you know like the garage or like some of the bigger projects um, that works for me but you know it's uh, I don't think there's one way or the other but I I really get frustrated in Windows Explorer. I can't see the thumbnails of my designs. It just, and I know I can go into artistic digitizer and see them, but I don't want to do it there because I'm in Windows Explorer. It just, 
I'd like to change that. I actually should put back what, well, I can't do it now because AG's assumed the identity of all the designs. So you know. I'll whinge, stop whinging now. One thing I do with all of my designs is I have a folder for all the zip files and I put all my zipped files in that folder just in case I someday get another machine because it has all the other kind of files in it. And then in my organized area, I only have my Jeff and my PDF and, you know, any JPEGs that came with it. And then I don't have to mess around with having the, you know, the Husqvarna and the brother and, and all the other um, designs on there, all the other machines. There's one though, isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it, mm, it could be Juju. I could be wrong. Where you have to pick which one you want. Like you, I think Juju, out. you have to pick it. But a lot of them, you can get all of them, and yeah. I like that because if I someday get a brother multi needle, then I still have all of them, and I can just okay. go into my, you know, in. <laughs> did I say brother multi needle? <laughs> you did. <laughs> But yeah, you want you want to be able to use them. I mean, and that's the benefit of it downloading yeah. them all. So, but yeah, yeah. So we had another question, and um, <clears throat> this one came with pictures of um, it, it was a design cut out from a T-shirt. And it says, I've been asked to finish the edges of these designs taken from a T-shirt and a sweatshirt and do a decorative stitch around each. Haven't done this before on my 9850, and I'm thinking I will serge the edges first, then a decorative stitch half inch on the inside, and then a satin stitch around the whole piece. How would I do that? I'm thinking it would be embroidery, and if so, would I design something or do it freehand on the machine? I would think you would do it in sewing mode, actually, for this. I will put stabilizer behind, of course, and leave it there for stability. I only have the five and a half size hoop. I would probably do that in sewing mode. Surging is a good idea first. You can do a surged edge on the um, 9850 also. You know, the, I can't remember what number it is. Hmm. Number six, isn't it? Six or seven? Is it? I have to get out of embroidery mode. I don't have enough experience with. Is it quilt? Is that what they're using it for a quilt? Mm, um, Chris, this one was yours. Yeah. Do you want to unmute and tell us? Chris, you'll have to um, check your settings for your audio. I'm afraid because we can't hear you. If you want to keep playing with that and see what happens, just leave your microphone on and then if it comes back, we can come back to it. Is that yep. okay? Okay. We will go on to another one and let Chris figure out her microphone. Sure. Would love ideas for hooping thicker items. I tried to hoop a quilt but couldn't quite make it work. Oh, yeah. You're going to – yeah, that can – Ruin your hoops, huh? Has anyone done thick? I, I've only ever floated stuff that's thicker. Is that what you do for quilts? I don't know. Uh, you can use the... Um, like a bulldog? People use the, the binder clips yeah. to hook it on for quilting, like edge to edge. Um, as far as quilts go, I'm not sure. Does anybody else have any ideas besides the binder clips? No? Crickets. We have some members who are very experienced quilters, but I don't, we don't have a lot of them here tonight. No. Um... We can definitely, and again, we can. These can go back, maybe into the main thread of the group as well. Yep. Got. 
But I, I have seen a lot of people suggest using the binder clips. Oops. Okay. To hook who's, on. Holly, whose question was that? You know, I don't remember. Okay. I just, I copied it and I pasted it into my Word document and I don't know whose it was. I can go back and look. No, no, don't stress. It'll be just, it'll be in the um, event. Interested in any tips for embroidering on my jeans? Depends where. Um, yeah. So if it's on pockets, you have to take them off. If you have to want to do it on the legs, mm, you can. If you've got the little, really tiny little hoop, you can kind of do it, but it's only down the bottom. Um, my experience has been you have to unpick them and then sew them back up. That's what I've done. I've I've seam ripped the inseam and yep. did the embroidery, and then I sewed it back up. Yeah, yeah. It's usually otherwise you just yeah you end up with it embroidered together. <laughs> so yeah, I think that's the the only way I've been able to do it. The denim jacket that I did, I did the arms, and yeah, yeah, you're right, Buffy. That's exactly yeah. I remember I I split it and then just I sewed up with pretty easy because you get. You can leave the, you know how you've got that yellow thread that you have usually on a denim piece? Um, I just left that in there and then I just sewed over it. So that would be, I think you'd have to unpick it or take it off and re-sew it. Oh, the jeans question was from Linda and she just left right before it. That's okay. We've got it. Oh, we've well. recorded it. Yep. Other questions? So Chris wants to know what stitch to use on the 9850 to get the same effect as the embroidery stitches. So you're talking like a satin stitch around the edges. Um, let me see. There is an applique stitch. There is. Yeah. I miss not having my machine. You should get one of these. I should, I've heard they're quite good. Everybody know how to rotate a design? Does anybody need to go over how to rotate a design? Yes, please. Yes? Um, that's okay. Awesome. So to rotate a design, you can't do it on our machine, unfortunately. There are some machines that you can rotate it, but on ours, it won't rotate it if it's outside of the... Um, outside of the boundaries of the hoop and so you have to get some kind of software but there's free software out there that all you know that pretty much all that you can do with it is rotate it but if that's all you want to do then that free software works really great i used my editor before i bought the genomi software and that worked great for rotating designs and then um, you can save it yeah. Sorry, sorry. Two things. A 550 you can rotate because we have bigger, there's bigger hoops. But in the five, there's a Facebook group for the 500E, which is also the 550E, and they just did a file for my editor because Genome don't put it on their um, global page, and I don't know why, but you can download it for free. And it's free anyway. But it should only be, you get my editor as part yeah. of the 550. Oh, okay. Um, but, yeah. Yeah, my editor is what I downloaded for the 9850 because I was trying to do a starry night and I had to rotate it. Where did, did you get it from the Genome Global site? My editor? Yeah. No, I just Googled free editing software. Google. Um, yeah, anyway, they do have it. I didn't know whether I should download it and then put it on the group, but it just seemed like I was being naughty. Unless, of course, you joined the 500E site and then you found it and then never posted, I suppose. Anyway. No, I, I just found it myself and downloaded it and, and used it. So, And then I bought the Genomi software, and I really like that. But you don't have to have expensive software to rotate a design. Nope. No, but you do have to rotate it with software if it is because you know ours are vertical, and so if your design is horizontal, 
it has to be rotated. And so then you would just save it as a Jeff file and then pull it back over to your thumb drive. Amy, you've got a question? I was just going to say I did have one that I was able to reduce it by that 20%. And that was just enough that I could turn it on the machine because okay. I don't have that software either. So, yeah. But I'm sure if it's any bigger than that, it wouldn't have done it. Yeah. yeah. You've got to just, you've just got to have a hoop that's bigger than the, the design, which is why on the 550 you can do it. But again, there are so many free softwares listed in an album, like Premiere 2, like my editor, like they're free. Like just go use them. And then if it's just to rotate it. And again, it's that quirk of Genomi and a lot of the digitizers get frustrated with Genomi. Do not ask the owner of String Theory Fabric Art what she calls it. <laughs> Don't ever mention Genomi to her. Because <laughs> it comes with a language warning. But um, the thing is, is that to it, Genomi just cannot cope with it rotated a certain way. It's just a quirk of the company. We don't know why. Brother doesn't do it. No one else does it. It's only that Genomi. So if you can't ever see the design, that's why we will go. You might need it rotated. And, and you know, my editor might do more than I realize. When I does. got my editor, I was so green and brand new. I got it before I even got my machine, I think. But, you know, I, I was buying designs before my machine came in the mail. So... <laughs> I'm still buying designs and I'm not. I was excited. <laughs> yeah. It is truly just grab some free software and just at least then you've got something and it allows you then to have a look at it. It's like, you know, even though I've got artistic digitizer, the best thing Francis shared with us was in Brilliance Essential. Oh, yeah. Those words, full words for free using a BX font and putting it straight into a digitizer. Because you do it in digitize it is such a pain because it's one letter at a time. So yeah. Chris, you you have a question. Is your is your your microphone working? Maybe. No? Okay. Keep trying. Jocelyn, you've got another question? Does anyone have um, computer a computer just dedicated just for the software and whatever and just doesn't have anything on it? Or do you just mix it all in with your normal stuff on your computer? I just have it on my computer. Just in, you know, in a folder in my documents. And I also Sorry. keep it on an external hard drive also. Every okay. time I save it to that, I also save it to the external hard drive. There seems to be a lot of files when you buy the ones that have every, um, you know, Jeff and all the others, and it just seems to be so many files. That's why I keep them in the zip, and I don't unzip all of them. I keep those as a zipped file folder, and then I just take out the um, Jeff fold files questions we want to make sure that if there's anything you'd like to know and then the other question I have is what else do you want us to do in another session because these are for you we have fun we love them but I wouldn't mind a little um a little bag some some something simple um maybe one that some could make out of leather some could do vinyl some could do fabric something like that a little so like uh, sew another sew-along, like our very first sew-along? Yeah, yeah, but a little bit more involved. Maybe a zipper, a bit of hardware, um, and some embroidery as well. Um, would you mind a, a pattern that you would have to purchase, or does, do you think we still need to find a free one? Use the Emmeline one. Yeah, I don't really care, um, I guess. It depends what everyone else wants to do, if they want to purchase it or not. Um, maybe, I guess there's some around that aren't, they're, you know, under $5 or something, just a, a very simple yep. 
Jocelyn, have a look at Emmeline bags and there's a free pattern called the retreat bag, which is where I first started. Now it doesn't have a zipper, but that was done on purpose for me because I was zipper phobic. Um, but it does have a frame. Um, but it's a great one to start with. We could use, again, it's a free option, but give us feedback on that. Well, yep, we can do bags. Yeah, like that, you know, over the shoulder bag, just a simple. Yeah, the machine. Yeah. Can... I, I love making bags, so I'm all on board with making bags. And, and I even, I even make Gail do zippers. Double zipper. I, just <laughs> I made her do a double zipper. And then forgot to open them up, which was why I couldn't. Working a bag when you don't open the zippers is impossible. Well, unless you unzip it up. But anyway, Amy? Uh, yeah, I did put it on there. There's a free uh, a site for free patterns called Soper Home. Yes. And oh, yeah, have, that's a good one. They have tons of purses. I mean, they just have everything you can imagine. And, and they're... Uh, directions were very clear. I really like that. But I also wanted to mention, um, and I don't know if anyone else is interested in this, but again, I would love to have each person show one thing that they've made or something, only because I would love to see the ideas at different things that people have been doing. And I think that's a good way to do it. Yeah, no, I think that's a great idea. Um, Bucky's also put, grab there's someone. another site called So Can She that has daily free patterns. And I think you can pay twenty dollars for so can she, and you can get the whole site. You know how like a couple of people have gone, oh, should I should I pay the twenty dollars or whatever? And some of them are really good. I use Daily Art Hub is great because I can convert them into SVGs to put them and get an embroidery file straight up. So you know it soon makes it quick and cheap instead of buying embroidery files. Um, so yeah, okay, we'll have a look at both of those. But yeah, bag we can. We can do a bag. We can always do a bag. Oh, there's one. What is? What do we have, Martha? It's just a mug rug that I got from uh, Creative Kiwi. It was a free pattern, and this was my very first one. The back is an envelope style um, opening, so you turn it, um, and that that you know finishes the edge. And I can actually you ran it up a little uh, bit more for us, Martha. Oh, sorry. I, no, I actually. I actually ran a satin stitch around it. Oh, I think I'm on an iPad. I'm not used to doing that. Um, That's okay. And the camera's up at the top. But the satin stitch I just did with my um, zigzag and okay. made the stitching really close together. But it has um, the option of adding a letter to it. I don't know if you can see that. Mm -hmm. And um, they, it gives you the whole alphabet. So, and, and I did a whole bunch of them. They, um, you know, I was using up scraps and it just, it turned out really nice. I was real pleased. Does anyone else have anything? We're a little bit over time, so we're just conscious of that, and particularly for you guys in the US, it's getting later. For me, it's lunchtime. <laughs> I gave instructions to Gary, and so my, my lunch should be ready by the time I'm finished. I, I was hoping my family was in there making dinner, but I don't think anybody's making dinner. <laughs> oh, they'll order pizza, but without pineapple, because they're heathens. Well, only some of them. No, 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 only some of them. Yes, they're the ones that are not true Australians, but that's okay. Well, I won't bring them with me. Yes, we have big discussions whether pineapple should be on a pizza. Yes or I no? I vote yes. No. Yes. <gasps> Jocelyn says okay. no. There's Sometimes. Jocelyn, you have to leave the country. <laughs> Paula says my name like they do on Shit's Creek. Just, I definitely think pizza belongs. I have Pineapple belongs on a pizza? No. But we've also had very big discussion oh, about you Julie saying that you put beets on your burgers. Julie, I love you. That would be very nice. Sweet hands. <laughs> you can come to Australia. <laughs> no bacon either. No bacon. 
<laughs> but we all think it's kind of weird that you don't put pickles on your burgers. So you put beets no. on it instead. I like oh, pickles. I put pickles on my homemade dill pickles. Yeah, I love oh, pickles. Oh, yeah. And beetroot. Who puts yeah. beets on their burgers? Everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Are they pickled beets? You yeah. know, right? Uh, oh, so we can buy, a can, well, see, we call it beetroot. Can beetroot, golden circle. A uh, hamburger is not a hamburger in Australia without bacon, egg, cheese, beetroot, pineapple, onion, and meat. No pickle is allowed. No. But, so how, how, do you, how do you call that a burger? Do you have room for the burger on there? <laughs> Oh, it's hilarious, Buffy. So then you buy it, it goes shooting out the bottom, and then you have to pick it all up. Yeah, it's and just, that sweet it, juice runs down your arm. And, it, it's oh, like, no. oh great. A great burger in Australia is like how many like paper towels or serviettes you need afterwards to wipe the mess. It's just the best. Never wear white. Change your life or beats on a burger, hands down. Yep. I'll have to try it sometime. I like beets. I've never had them on a burger. Can you buy canned beets in the U.S.? Yes. Yes. It's yeah. Yeah. You just don't. I mean, you can buy fresh. You can. There are people who eat beets, but I, I think you know it's a very inexpensive food, so you can right. cook it. Great raw beetroot on the burger. You can just do that. What is that? Great oh, yeah. yeah. raw. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know what that is. No. Raw beetroot. I, I would get candy. I think there she may not understand you. Raw beets. Yeah, the round You're saying beet root. Beet root. That's what we yeah. call it. You call it beets, we call it beetroot. Right. It's a dark oh. maroon thing. Yeah. A root very dark, very dark maroon right. in the ground. Change your hair. Yeah, I think you're just talking. She's talking about it. Beets. Would have to be, it would yeah. have to be canned or pickled. I can't imagine fresh beets. Yeah, yeah. raw, grated raw is nice. And Unless salad. you grilled it. Grilled beets oh, yeah. are good. Grated? Yeah, but not on a, not on a burger. Like, oh, Roast it like a potato? It's a game changer yeah. if you have pickled beets in your world on a burger with, with pineapple <laughs> and the onion is not raw. We always cook the onion. It's never okay. raw. Anyway, internet like this could become an international incident. Yep. You know that. Yeah. So I'm going to go plant beets I in my garden now. Got the beet all together. I just and, and when you bite it, because your mouth has to be so wide. So the next rabbit cooking. hole is cooking from the 9850. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, or it could like just be hamburger toppings. It sounds like we could go on forever and what's put on a hamburger. <laughs> See, I don't, I don't get pickle. So the, I, I can't remember the last time I had a McDonald's burger. But the thing, most, uh, some people in Australia, me, would get the pickle and throw it out the window. But once it stuck on my car, and the juice of my car then got damaged from the, from the pickle. That you throw it on the ceiling, and who's ever so, pickle stays up there the longest wins. That's so right. do you put pickles on your fried chicken sandwich like Chick Fil A? Fried, I don't need. We, we don't have um, Chick fil A here in Australia. Kentucky Fried Chicken is the only thing we have. And um, a Porto, isn't it? A Porto? Porto, we but, have, yeah. But do, does KFC have a sandwich that puts dill pickle on the chicken sandwich? No. No. I don't know. It sell. We you have people to... that will order their burger at McDonald's specifically because you can order exactly what you want without the pickle. No pickles, yes. My daughter gets a pickle. So anyway, these are the big issues. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the international um, issues of the pickle. day. They are the big issues, but if we can, if we can still be friends after it, I think we're going to do okay. Um, I think all I can say is thank you very much for your time. I hope you've had some fun and you've learned some new rabbit holes that you can go down. Uh, we are not accountable or responsible for those rabbit holes. We just wanted to share them with you. Now I'm hungry. Um, no, I know. I'm hungry too. Um, <laughs> so I just want to thank you all for your time and your input. Thank you, guys. Um, and no doubt we will organise another one. one. But we just want to make sure that you get something out of them. That's the important thing for us. Um, and thanks for being part of our group. We love it. We hope you do too. Yes. So, all right, everybody. You have to be
So you have the oh, night nice. festival your Saturday and a Sunday. Sunday lunchtime. Okay, so have yes. a good you. day in the future. <laughs> I'm looking at, so I, I can't see the water at the moment because it's raining. Oh, so in the future it's raining. Well, down here it is. <laughs> Got it. But the future <laughs> seems okay. I think, don't you reckon, Jocelyn, it's okay? Yeah. I can actually see sunshine for the first time in um, months, weeks. Oh, All right. <laughs> then I'll allow Sunday to come. Thank Bye. you so much. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thanks, everybody.